Hello, football fans, and welcome back to Overtime's 2022 NFL Playoff Coverage. I'm your host, T-Money, and I'm going to be walking you guys through the standings of the competition so far. It's been a very unpredictable playoffs as a whole, and uh, the standings are a little underwhelming when you look at them, but um, everyone kind of rebounded. You know, everyone went 1-1 one one this last week, except for Big Bob, who nailed both games and went 2-0. Candyman right now is in last place at 5-7. and seven. Robo and Brebs are tied for third at 6-6. Six and six. Big Bob is in second at 7-5. and five. And you guys know it, Team Money in first place, 9-3 and three record. I um, surely will not um, brag about that anymore throughout this competition. Uh, with that being said, let's just um, get into a general discussion on what we saw last week, because I thought, or uh, two weeks ago at this point, because I thought there were some incredible games. So, uh, Candyman, lead us off here. With what we saw last week? Yeah, just uh, general thoughts on that championship re- on that championship round. You know, it's funny. I was watching the Pro Bowl, which became a game of backyard football, two-hand touch flag, and they interviewed Patrick Mahomes, and they said, uh, you know, it's good to see you out here with your teammates. You know, how do you feel about the loss? Are you over the loss? And he said, I'm never over the loss. You're always thinking Super Bowl or bust. And I thought it was amazing that you have a 21-3 lead, you're the Chiefs, and you go for it. You tell your coach, Andy Reid, your Pat Mahomes, hey, we can get a touchdown here, and they fail. And I came back to haunt them that second quarter at call, you know, at the end of the half. And I think the Chiefs are in shell shock. All credit's due to uh, Joey Burrows and the rest of the Bengals and the, the coaching staff. And it shows you that the NFL is full of parity now. Uh, in terms of the Rams, I think they have the most talent. And I think they're a win-now team. It doesn't shock me that, that they're in the Super Bowl. Uh, you have a journeyman quarterback in Matt Stafford, and you have arguably the best wide receiver in Cooper Cup, and you got that great defensive trio of Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, and Von Miller. So um, yeah, we have the we have the matchup set. You know, we're in Radio Row Week, we're in Media Week, and uh, this Sunday Super Bowl will be played. All right, Brebs, uh, general thoughts for you um, on what you saw. You know, it's the Bengals keep proving me wrong every week. Keep picking against them. They uh, ended up winning. It looked like it was going to be a blowout in the first quarter. Mahomes looked amazing those first three drives. And then second half, completely different story. Bengals turned it up. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and T. Higgins all having great second halves. And on the Rams, the rams Niners game, Garoppolo can only give you so much false hope. Just above average QB. They had a 10-point lead. They could have won in the fourth quarter if the guy – if you guys remember that game when Matthew Stafford threw the ball downfield, could have been intercepted, and who knows. But we're excited to watch the Rams in the Super Bowl. Excited to see Matthew Stafford have a chance to get his ring. And same with Odell Beckham. Yeah, those um those two plays had such you know just such a huge impact on both of those games. You know, and you saw a second uh, uh cornerback step up for the Bengals. You know, making an incredible, you know, just a great open field tackle on Tyree Kill to prevent the touchdown. And then you had a safety, uh, I believe it was Jaquari Tart, you know, just dropped that interception for the Niners, which is brutal. It's always great to see how those big plays can just decide games like that. And those are the kind of plays that as a fan you look back on, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line and just wonder what could have been. It's one of the things that makes the league so great. Like, I'm sure everyone in Buffalo is, you know, wondering, what if Josh Allen called heads? I think um, that's the best part about the NFL, in my opinion. Um, any thoughts on the Pro Bowl? I mean, we um, we had the Pro Bowl happen, but in between shows, any anything with you guys? Anything you want to say about it? So when I was a kid, the Pro Bowl was in Hawaii, and it was a skills competition. And uh, I think even the timing, I think it was after the Super Bowl. I'm not going to say they played flag football, two-hand touch. They did tackle each other, but I felt like the quality was better. I mean, Mac Jones was in the Pro Bowl because I guess Josh Allen declined and some other quarterbacks might have declined. I see that, that that they were being very playful with Stephon Diggs and his brother on Dallas, and they actually flip-flopped. You know, the safety Diggs on Dallas or the cornerback, whatever position he plays on defense, was playing wide receiver. And then Steph was jamming him up as a corner. So they were being playful. They did a skills competition, a you know, creative catch. And you had Steph Diggs doing the Bills Mafia, tables, ladders, and chairs catch. And, Things like that. So I think they're trying to 
get creative with it and get it a little more fan friendly and, and entertaining. Brebs, what would you do to improve the game? Do you think anything can be done at this point? Well, I don't know. It just did that didn't really feel like football that like the game itself. I would say this, the uh what they've been doing last year, they did this year again, was playing the Madden ball, the Pro Bowl, which I thought was very fun to watch. With like um it was Marsh it was Marshawn Lynch and two other players from each side in the Pro Bowl. It was really cool because you got to see like some commentary, like see like how these guys interact with each other. I really like that. Yeah, that's interesting. I think um, you know, we've seen more and more digital based stuff, you know, integrate itself into the NFL and just society in general. So maybe that's um, a direction they're looking at in the future. Something needs to be done. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but um, something's got to be done. I'm sure the NFL will step up and change something about it. All right. And that's enough Pro Bowl talk. I think um, everyone's sick of hearing about that atrocious game. So um, let's move on to something fun. Let's move on to some speculation for next year. You know, the Bengals really came out of nowhere. Like, I don't think anyone had them in this game. I had them at 28th in my preseason power rankings. So, yeah, that was brutal on my part. Mm-hmm. But um, it does seem like every year we get one or two teams that comes out of nowhere. So, uh, Candyman, who do you think that team could be in the AFC next season? I mean, is there hope for the Jets, who had four wins this year? No, the Bengals had four wins. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. I don't have the Jets. It's okay. actually not. A, it's actually not a team that's at the bottom. I would love to sing the San Diego Superchargers song, but they're now in LA. The team I'm going to go with is the Chargers. I know they had a winning record. They almost made the playoffs. They kind of remind me of the early 2000s Chargers when you know, they traded for Philip Rivers and they had nice complementary offensive weapons in LT, the second LT, Ladanian Tomlinson, and Antonio Gates. So you got Philip. Uh, I'm sorry, Philip Rivers was in 2000. You got Justin Herbert now. Was a great quarterback. He was in the Pro Bowl. You have Mike Williams and Keenan Allen at two 1,000 yard receivers. They got a lot of cap space. And if that overtime game, the last game of the regular season versus the Raiders falls their way, they might be in the playoffs. They should definitely be a playoff team next year. They got to spend money on the defense. And I think they're an up and coming team, even though they kind of are already there. That's not really a stretch prick. In the NFC, uh, we're um, actually going to send it over to Brebs real quick. We'll um, break up the discussion a little. Let it um, spread out a little bit. So, uh, Brebs, what would your pick be in this conference? So, it's going to be a team that is uh, in the same uh, division as Mr. Candia's Jets, which would be the – actually, I think the Miami Dolphins. And why I think is because they got the new head coach, Mike McDaniels, who is from the Niners. Last year, they're, they were first in rush, rushing yards as an offense and, like, first – in like a, a certain like passing category, I forget what it's called. But I just think the Dolphins, they have like good players on that team. Seeing Jalen Waddle emerge as that rookie wide receiver last year was really good. Um Tua Tua, like he got like kind of better throughout the season. It's just like he isn't gonna play that good if you don't give him a good O line. And the defense, they obviously that's the strength of the Dolphins team. Like this team was one game from like making the playoffs last year. Like I think people forget that. Yeah, that's um, – I really th- – I'm with you on the Dolphins. They're not my pick. They're one of the teams I was considering. I'm a little worried with them firing Flores, and I'm saying this in the least controversial way possible. I don't think he should have gone. Um, I think he was absolutely the guy to lead them to the next level, but um, I see why they did it. I think McDaniel is a great offensive mind. Um, and now here's something that's interesting. I'm actually picking another team right in the same tier as you guys. And I'm actually rolling out the sports card for this. I got a Derek Carr and the <laughs> Vegas Raiders. I just really, um, really like this team. I think Derek Carr is one of the most underrated QBs in the league. I think he has been for a while. And I really love the hire of Josh McDaniels. Even though, you know, again, um, Rich Passaccia really did an incredible job there. McDaniels is just such a high upside hire. We all know what just what he did in New England, how long he was around Belichick. And they brought in Patrick Graham from my New York Giants at D.C., who has been, um, I think, did a very good job with relatively limited talent on that Giants defense. So, yeah, the Raiders are my pick. 
But now the interesting thing is you have all these teams, plus you can throw in teams like the Denver Broncos that are just in this middle tier where they all miss the playoffs, but they all look like they can take the next step. Do you guys think that they're um, – do you guys think that there's just too much talent in this AFC? Well, maybe the Broncos should uh, lure Aaron Rodgers onto their team and see what happens. That There's been those rumors and that talk. Right? That's kind of died down. But the NFL is a, is a game of parity now. You know, it's not the uh, Steel Curtain anymore. It's not the Joe Montana, San Francisco 49ers of the 80s. It's not the Great Wall of Dallas. There's a lot of parity, which makes the league a lot of fun. So a lot of these teams that didn't make the playoffs, you know, maybe they were 9-7. and seven. I'm sorry, you know, 9-8 um, and eight or roaming around 500 where they're on the winning or losing side of that. They can turn it around in one year. So that's kind of cool. So let me uh, rephrase this a little bit for you here, Brebs, because – one of the points that I wanted to get to was mostly just the quarterback thing. You are obviously very high on the Dolphins and Tua Tagovailoa. And if we're being honest, if we throw Tua in the NFC, he might be the second best young QB in the whole conference behind only Kyler. Because it just seems like all these young QBs are in the NFC. Like you look at Tua and like what makes him stand out? What makes any of these guys stand out? Like that's kind of the problem that I have here. So, uh, Brebs, like, would you um, what, what would you say in that situation? Well, I say this. Um, I think that the balance power in the AFC with these quarterbacks, it's it's going to be fun to watch over the next couple of years. Like, I'm excited to watch like Justin Herbert. I think like he's definitely going to make the playoffs these upcoming years. Like his team. And also we have Joe Burrow with the Bengals who are in the Super Bowl this year coming back next season. It's just so exciting to watch all these QBs just like go at it every year now. And like there's no like guarantee who's going to make the Super Bowl from that conference because it's it's wide open. Yeah, I'm just a little concerned about not only um, not only the number of QBs there are, but the fact that they're all so young. And there's such little, you know, such a small divide in age. Because if you look historically over the past 15, 20 years, the QBs, the teams that win, are the teams that don't pay their quarterbacks. So I wonder, you know, if you look at the strategy of teams and stuff, like could teams like the Baltimore Ravens, for example, move off of their guy, a guy like Lamar Jackson, and load up all the other positions and have, you know, the best roster possible without an elite QB. I think there's so many, um, so much stuff strategically that you can look at. It looks like you're um, looking to say something, Candy, man. I'll send it back over. Well, again. it's kind of funny you said that because look at the AFC North and we were talking about Lamar Jackson and, you know, our friend from Cleveland who does progressive commercials, Baker Mayfield, being the premier quarterbacks in that division in that, you know, and now we got the Joey Burrow uh, story going on. So I don't know if there's a formula, you know, but – I mean, you can't be a good team in this league without a franchise quarterback that's going to consistently get you nine to ten wins and get you in the playoffs every year. All right, that's interesting. Um, I, I'm sure we can talk about this for hours, but we are going to move it along and uh, flip conferences to the NFC, where um, I personally believe there's a lot less talent, honestly, and I think it's easier for a team to make a run. So, Candyman, who do you think that team would be? Theodore, I totally agree with agree with you. When I was thinking about the NFC team to watch, I really had to think deep and hard. And I think it's a team that didn't get a lot of wins. And I think it's a team that you're going to like to hear come out of my mouth that can do well next year. And I think that's your New York football giants. The hiring of Brian Dable, you know, Joe Judge is gone. You have uh, Joe Schoen and him, the GM of the, the new GM of the Giants, and Brian Dable work together in Buffalo. You know, he, what's Brian Dable known for? First of all, he's been all over the place. He's been in the league for 20 years, did an entire tour of the AFC, was an offensive coordinator at Alabama. Uh, I think he could have been the San Diego Chargers head coach last year or landed a job last year, but I think he wanted to ride it out one more year with Josh Allen, try to make that Super Bowl run this year. But he's just too hot of a commodity to pass up on. And uh, if he can whisper Daniel Jones – and he can look at the current personnel like Saquon Barkley's and the other talent on the Giants and figure out how to use them. I think they're a team, if the luck is there, they can make the playoffs next year. Okay, you don't know how badly I wanted to pick the Giants, 
But I know what's going to happen. I've seen it so many times. You know, they're going to go out. They're going to draft players in the draft. You know, I'm going to get so excited. And then they're going to go out and they're going to start one and five. I'm completely prepared for it. And I am not going to allow myself to get filled with hope this year. So, um, I, it's amazing that people are looking at the Giants as a um, as a team that could be good. But as a Giants fan who came into this year with so much hope, I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. But well, we, they got to pick up the defense a little bit too. They have a DVOA of 18, and uh, what a year ago, two years ago, their offense was pretty good, but they just let up so many points. So I'll just say that. All right, uh, let's flip it over to you, Brebs, and uh, have you give your pick here. I'm going to have to go – for a team to look out next year in the NFC, being the Minnesota Vikings. I like the roster that they have, and I like the uh, new head coach they got, Kevin O'Connor, and the new GM they got. And I like how in, in the post, in the press conference in, for uh, the new GM, like he looks like he, like he sounds like he knows like what he's going to do, which is scary because like he can make this like Viking team, I feel like, good. And Kirk Cousins, whatever how you feel about him, he had a much more efficient year uh, this past season. And you have Justin Jefferson, top three wide receivers, crazy, crazy numbers. And this team, this team moving forward, it looks like on the bright side. And I think like this team, like they have like a lot of good players, as I said. And um, with this new head coach, like I said as well, Kevin O'Connor, um, I, th- they have a lot of uh, stuff to look forward to. You know, there are three QBs that I always say have just been underrated for so long. One of them is Derek Carr, as I said earlier. One of them is Kirk Cousins, which uh, you got to. The third, Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, in my opinion, is just such just such an overlooked player. We saw what he did in 2016, and the team around him just got so much worse. And if we're being honest, I don't think we've seen much of a decline in him, like, physically. Like, yeah, he's getting up there in age, but I don't think – like, I was saying physically, he still has all the gifts, all the tools that he needs to lead a team. And I think that this um, Arthur Smith Falcons team is going to break out in a big way. They were, I believe, 7-10 and 10 last year. They were, you know, really in the playoff race pretty late in the season, like week 14, week 15. And when you know it, the um, whole NFC South looks pretty weak this year. I mean, who knows what the Bucs are going to do at QB. I'm sure they'll bring someone in, someone solid. But I I think uh, Matt Ryan will almost definitely be the best quarterback in that division next year. I think the Saints, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with Jameis. They have no coach right now. I wouldn't feel confident about them. I think Atlanta's going to go out, win this division, and make some noise in the playoffs. Uh, Any last thoughts on anything said here about the NFC from you guys? I just want to add on what you were saying, Theodore, about Matt Ryan. I personally think as well, Matt Ryan's a Hall of Famer. Like, look at like look at his stats throughout like the past seven seasons. Like. What other Q- QBs are doing that on a consistent basis? Like, he 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 deserves the respect. Yeah, and I absolutely agree with everything he said. I think um, if he didn't blow that twenty-eight to three lead, which really he had such a small part of, like he lost that one fumble, but you know it was a big hit. Most QBs would have lost it. He didn't make bad throws. It was really just um, a perfect storm, and the fact that he was up against Tom Brady. So I, I hope, you know, he can put together a final good year and um, get the respect he deserves while also locking up his spot in Canton. So uh, with that being said, we're going to segue back over to this season because we have an in- incredible Super Bowl matchup in store. And um, one thing that's interesting is these are two teams that really don't get talked about much in the New York market, especially mostly just because of how big the New York market is and how much everyone loves to talk about the Giants and Jets. But um, these teams, have the Bengals in particular, have gone a little under the radar recently. So um, with that being said, let's get um, let's have you guys refresh the uh, viewers on some team history from these squads. Candyman, who is, in your eyes, is the most iconic Bengals player of all time? Well, I mean, if you know anything about me, I'm from Long Island. So you got to go with East Islip's own Norman Esiason, Boomer Esiason, named Boomer because he was kicking the womb. 
And uh, he's a sports radio legend at WFAN. You know, he worked for Westwood One and CBS. In Super Bowl 23, he left the field, him and the Icky Wood Shuffle with the lead. However, they're playing against the San Francisco 49 team with Joe Montana, and Joe Montana marched down the field. I think Boomer's a borderline Hall of Famer. I don't know if he'll get into Canton. Maybe with the broadcasting he'll get in. But for me, Long Island native, Boomer Esiason, it's got to be my number one Bengals icon. But there are there are other people that could be in that conversation as well. Yeah, I love Boomer's show, um, Boomer and Geo. It's, um, I'd say, one of the most entertaining ones on the air right now in WFAN. And he um, he definitely had a great career. Personally, uh, I liked it better when it was Boomer and Carton. I like Boomer and Carton better personally, but, but Geo is another Long Islander who fills in great. Well, uh, Carton's got his own show going now um, in the afternoon, so – you got both of them separate, and I think I think it's uh, worked out pretty well for the radio there. Uh, Brebs, who would you go with for the Bengals? I also, uh, I also, I also said Boomer. So I said, I just uh, he had, he's a very smart person. I love watching on the NFL Today Show talk to other guys like Nate, Nate Burrow and said uh, Boomer, uh, Bill Cowher. He's just a very smart man, and um, and I think that uh, he's the most iconic for me from the Bengals. Yeah, it's um he yeah go ahead Andy man. Just I want to give a couple of asterisks. Anthony Munoz is the only Bengals Hall of Famer. Uh, Ken Anderson played quarterback before Boomer, and a little NFL history. Paul Brown founded the Browns and the Bengals. Paul Brown is NFL Ohio football. Yeah, so my thunder there on Anthony Munoz. I um he's just oh I'm sorry sorry probably I'm yeah sorry. I'm let you go. It's, a, it's all good. Probably the best guard of all time. He's um, it's just not iconic though. You know, a great player, but we all know that a guard can't really be an icon. As um, d- disappointing as it is for the big men, but um, I do have an icon, and that is uh, Chad Ochocinco. He's um, he's a fun guy. He is um. Like, just seeing some of his highlights, he was a great player on the field, did some great stuff off the field. He's doing all sorts of stuff now. I saw him uh, doing, like, coverage for one of the UFC fights. He's all over the place, and he's um, he carved out a great career for himself. The, um, certainly probably one of the most fun players to ever play for that Bengals squad. I never even thought – I it slipped right through my head. I didn't even think of him. Yeah, he's a fun well, guy. You also got – you could, you know – Think guys, we forget about Andy Dalton. You know, with AJ Green came to mind. Icky Woods was the running back. He did the Icky Shuffle that in Super Bowl twenty three. Yeah, it's um, unfortunate that uh, Big Bob and Robo were unable to join us because Big Bob, I know, had a lot prepared on that um, Andy Dalton, AJ Green era Bengals squads. Those were fun to watch. I was um, I was a big fan of those teams. You know, third, fourth, fifth grade, and one of the teams I grew up with. Disappointing that they can never win a playoff game. Can't forget about Montez Perfect though. He was um, it was fun watching him murder guys out in the field. Okay, with that being said, let's uh, switch teams and head over to LA. They've had um, a bit of a more storied history, um, more talked about traditionally, and they've had a very good run lately. So, Candyman, who's your iconic Ram? Uh, since I'm older than you guys, we go very old school. Me and uh, Dano's generation, Merlin Olson. I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys know who that is. Uh, as a kid, I remember him on Little House on the Prairie. I think he was Mr. Murphy, but he played at Utah State. The stadium's called Maverick Stadium slash Merlin Olson Stadium. He's a four-time, excuse me, fourteen-time Pro Bowler. I think he shares that distinction with Tony Gonzalez and another NFL player. And he also did broadcast for NBC with Dick Enberg. And Merlin Olsen was an all-time defensive lineman Ram. And he's an iconic player of the 60s and 70s and broke into media in the 80s. I just remember him being on Little House on the Prairie, which was a very wholesome show, which was very popular. Michael Landon, Victor French, always wore this Oakland A's hat. And Merlin Olsen, they were, they were three main characters in that show. So that's who I'm going with. Yeah, he, he was great. He's actually – um. You got into it, but he's actually tied for the second most Pro Bowl appearances of all time, besides behind um, Tom Brady, of course, which shouldn't surprise anyone. But, um, yeah, he was he was an absolute legend, unfortunately. Way too early for me to even have recognized. Uh, Brebs, who's your pick here? 
Well, with the Rams, there's a lot of players that come to mind. Like, you got the players that are from the greatest show on turf, Tory Holt. You got um, Kurt Warner and, for the past, Eric Dickerson. But I think I'm going to go with Kurt Warner because he had such an inspiring story from being a uh, – what was it? A um, Working at the uh, supermarket as, like, a uh, stock, sh- stock shelves to an NFL quarterback. And I still got to see that movie, American Underdog, that came out recently. And I just think that Kurt Warner, he's just such a guy icon. It's just so – it's amazing how he just went for that and being able to win a Super Bowl as well. Yeah, you really stole the words right out of my mouth there. Those greatest uh, show on turf teams were so incredible. You know, I've watched so many of their highlights. And it's crazy that they only came away with one Super Bowl, which uh, they almost didn't get. You know, they were a one-yard stretch away from – not even of winning that one, but those are some incredible teams. And I absolutely agree with what you said. Kurt Warner might have the greatest NFL story of all time. And he's my pick for sure. You know, got him to sign this card for me a few years back. You know, he's, he's a great guy. He runs a lot of charities and stuff. He's um icon in every sense of the world, every uh, sense of the word. So, um, We've kind of covered everything Super Bowl wise, except for the actual game. So um, this is the moment everyone's been waiting for. Let's get into some game picks. Candyman, who do you have? So last year when we did this show, we had to predict our predict our up and coming teams from both conferences. I went with the Rams last year as the up and coming team because when we when we recorded the show, the Goff for Stafford trade happened. I thought a lot of the pieces were in place, and I think they're in place. I think this is this is the window. It's 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 now or never. Maybe one more year of getting into the playoffs, but I I, I think this is the year. You can argue that they have the most talented position position player at wide receiver in Cooper Cup, um, at you know Aaron Donald at his position and Jalen Ramsey at his position. So they have the talent. I'm not counting Joey out. I, I my picks are so bad. I don't really know who to go with. So I'm just gonna go with the Rams because I picked them as the up and coming team last year. SoFi Stadium, unofficial home game from the Rams in this Super Bowl. I think they will win. All right, Brabs, do you agree with Candyman here? I do agree with him here. We could talk all day about Matthew Stafford, how great Cooper Cup is, or OBJ, Van Jefferson, Tyler Higby's. Pretty impactful fart on the tight ends. I'm not even going to talk about the coaches of Sean McVay. What I think is a huge X factor in this Super Bowl is going to come down to the battle in the trenches. The Bengals O-line going against that Rams D-line with Aaron Donald, Morgan Cox, and Von Miller. It's going to be something to see. And if the Rams can control that, they have a very great chance of winning this Super Bowl. Now, that's an interesting point, which I'll get to in a minute. Just – um. Robo and Big Bob, as I previously said, were not able to join us. But Robo does agree with you guys. He's picking the he's picking the Rams. Big Bob, though, disagrees. He is going with Joe Burrow and the Bengals, as am I. You guys already know, you know, I've picked the Bengals every round. I'm 3-0 picking them. I almost picked the Super Bowl matchup perfect, but we um got to that a little earlier. But, yeah, I think the Bengals are winning this. And I think it will be because of the battle in the trenches. You know, if we look at the AFC championship game, my exact words were that the Bengals, you know, the Joe Burrow would get sacked all the time, but he'd still manage to make some big throws. Well, guess what? He did not get sacked all the time. In fact, he only got sacked one time all game. And the Chiefs O-line just really, or the Bengals O-line really was just... I thought really overperformed and really showed out. And I think they can do that again, you know, even though they are against Aaron Donald. I think the bigger problem will be the run game for the Bengals. I think it will be very hard to get mixed and involved. But with that, without um with that being said, Joe Burrow is just such a big time quarterback. He's gonna make the big throws and he will um he'll carry since he opassed Matt Stafford and a very good Rams team. Uh, before we close it out, I would like to get into the um, just all the star power in this game because they're so it's so top loaded with the star players. Who do you guys think is the best player playing in this football game? Uh, I think Cooper Cup 
this year, really established himself as a great player. He's got tremendous work ethic. He almost has Tom Brady type work ethic at the wide receiver position. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Cooper Cup. Slight X factor to ODB Jr. Um, I think he's lucky to be in the game, but going with Cooper overall. Absolutely, and Cooper Cup's uh, story is incredible. You know, Eastern Washington University. That's where he went to college, and he was barely getting playing time at first. You know, he was a walk on. He came from out of nowhere really and such an incredible story there and it's incredible watching him get open because you don't even know how he does it but he just always does and made one of the clutchest plays in recent history with that just incredible um you know incredible job getting past the buck secondary for the win back in the division around uh brebs who is your pick here definitely cooper cop here um, for the past three years, like he's had, he has to do, he, he has to deal with uh, Jared Goff at QB, but finally he has a perfect scenario with Matt Stafford. He had such a huge impact on this Rams offense. Um, the ability for him, like at run after catch to be able to break tackles and get like 10 or 15 more yards. It's, it's, it's outstanding. And like, he like, in the regular season, I think he was like at least like a top five or top four MVP candidate. He was balling. Yeah, he absolutely was. And I, I've already said I love this guy. But come on, Aaron Donald is the best player playing in this football game, and you can't convince me otherwise. This man's played eight seasons in the NFL, and he's made seven straight all pros, three time defensive player of the year. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely wild what this man has been able to accomplish. And he's, um, I really still am kind of hopeful that the Bengals online can keep him in check a little bit. But you, at the same time, you just get the feeling that late in the game, he will be running wild and um, getting to Burrow all the time because that's what superstars do. He is, um, he's the best player in the NFL right now, and it's not even a debate in my opinion. Well, Theodore, if you remember against the Titans, Burrow got sacked nine times. They still find a way to win. Yeah. So that's um, that's what makes it so interesting. There's so many variables. Like, you know, even Burrow, you know, he made a um, what could have been a very costly interception late in the game. So there's just so many variables is as far as, you know, will Burrow be able to handle the pressure, which I think he will. Like, will your line be good? Will they not? You know, you have a uh, CJ Uzuma at tight end who may not be at 100%. There's just so much to look forward to. And I am so excited for this football game, as I'm sure you guys are too. With that being said, um, that will unfortunately wrap up overtime's 2022 NFL playoff coverage. We will be back next year with um, – so a refreshed um, cast, I believe. Unfortunately, this is uh, your last ride here, Brebs. Um, any last words, actually, for the um, for the fans? I just like to thank everyone for watching our show from last year to this year. Enjoyed what I have to say for all you guys. Well, let's see if you can uh, close out your run with one final correct pick and finish with a winning record this year. Yes, finish out on top. Even though I can't catch you. Do the best I can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no one ever had a chance of catching me. It's just a, you can't catch team money. I think we, you all should have known that from the beginning. <laughs> that'll um, so yeah, that'll, that'll do it for our overtime playoff coverage. I'm Team Money signing off. See you all next year. Let's go Bengals.